Did you guys hear that? Well, this meeting is being recorded. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Cool. What are you wearing? Garments that make you look good. You know, I find I always just find that interesting. Um, when um, uh, fashion shows or, or award shows, where they would always kind of like, I mean, we're talking about people who have who just did phenomenal work in in their craft, uh, where they're you know they wrote or sung this beautiful song, uh, play you know an Oscar winning uh, Oscar winning performance, and the very first thing the people get out of the car, they go, "What are you wearing?" I mean, I used to think like that's an odd question to ask. I mean, this this individual, I was, I, in fact, the other thing was Denzel, um, who uh, for um, uh, uh, training day, um, they're like, "Who are you wearing?" And he said, "I don't know." My wife picked it out, and I thought that was like the most excellent answer because all the, all the women had like, you know, I'm wearing like, you know, the first name, I'm wearing Chantes or Jantongs or whatever. The Lapierre or whatever it is, and they're like, oh, okay. And so, you know, you, you didn't look at that person for their skills. You didn't look at that person for their ability. You looked at that person to see what designer they had on their back. And I felt like, you come on, you guys are missing it. But there's something about that I want to kind of touch on a little bit. So you might even say to much to me, it was more or less like a, um, a um, oh, I get it now moment. Not an aha moment. Well, okay, let's say an aha moment to where I go, I get it now. But there's a more a spiritual revelation with that. Just going to go ahead and go back to that. Clothes don't make you, but they do tell your story. In Genesis chapter 37, verses 2 and 3, it says, These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Behal and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was a son of his old age. And he, Israel, made his son Joseph a coat of many colors. Now, just to kind of just give you the few, a few pointers here. As we just read, Joseph was jo Jacob's favorite. Uh, so Jacob himself made the coat for Joseph. The coat itself is significant in so many prophetic ways. For example, um, some say it's the same color as Lucifer's splendor. Uh, the same colors as Adam's radiance. Uh, or the precursor of the breastplate of the high priest. Mystic revelation! Technically speaking, Joseph should have been the firstborn son. Because remember, he was upset. He was supposed to be married to originally Rachel at first, but because of Laban played his little shenanigans, um, uh, uh, Rachel was the uh, was. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Jacob, Joseph, and um, Benjamin were the last two sons, if you will. But they should have been one and two, not the eleven and twelve. So that's one reason why. Finally, 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 Jacob is with the woman that he really wanted to be with in the first place. She was basically the chosen one, the one originated from the beginning when he cried and, oh, she's the one, she's the one. So the, those two coming together and God finally opening up Rachel's womb was just the blessing of seeing Joseph and then Benjamin. Uh, and it, it's just prophetically how that, you know, even though they, he was a, the firstborn son, it was the firstborn of the promise. The firstborn of the promise, which is significant. And I'm sure he loved his other brothers, but as we just read, he said Jacob, J, uh, Joseph was his favorite because he was a son of his old age. So then we read more. And so we know we see in the first part, Jacob makes the coat for Joseph, right? So then we go on and find out that, um, he, you know, Jacob, I'll just stop real fast. Um, just a recap, Joseph has a dream. He has a dream that, and interesting enough, the dream didn't happen until after he got the coat. 
Are you with me? So he has a dream that all of a sudden he sees the stars bowing down. And then he begins to tell his brothers, hey, I had a dream that all, you know, uh, the stars are bowing down to me. Even the sun and moon, they're all bowing to me. And then they were, at first they were jealous of the guy anyway, because he was a favorite. He was, you know, daddy's little boy, mama's little boy. And then, well, Rachel's mama's little boy. And then also for the fact of that he was a favorite because he was the youngest. So the youngest kid always gets spoiled anyway. So they hated him on every, every level you can imagine. So when he tells this dream, they're plotting to kill him or to hurt him because they just can't stand daddy's little favorite son. So we read in Genesis 37, 18 to 24 says, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit, say pit. And we will say some evil beast devoured him, and we shall see what becomes of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into the, this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Now, clothes don't make you, but they do tell your story. Point verse 29, and Reuben returned to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes, and he returned to his brethren and said, the child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a, goat, a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, this have we found Know not whether it be thy son's coat or no, or no. And they knew it and said, it is my son. And I'm sorry. And he said, it is my son's coat. An evil beast has devoured him. Joseph is what thou rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. Like I said, your clothes tell a story. Now, it may be a lie a half truth or a false conclusion, but a story no less is told. The brothers never told the story, but let their father come to his own conclusion. The garment was dipped in blood of a goat instead of the blood of the lamb. We'll get to that in a second. Prophetically speaking of the scapegoat that has all the sins of Israel transferred to it and that is led out to the desert just like Joseph was. Now again, clothes don't make you, but they do tell your story. Genesis uh, chapter 39, verse 11 to 12 says these words. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she, okay, let me, I'm sorry, I probably, for those who don't know the story, what happened was, after his brothers sold him into, uh, threw him into the pit, they actually, they didn't kill him, but they sold him to uh, some Ishmaelites, and the Ishmaelites sold him to the Egyptians. So here this guy is a slave uh, to the second in command to Pharaoh. In fact, he was a, uh, he, we, we might call head of the security guard, head, head of the secret service. This guy, Potiphar, was the top cop of, of Egypt, and he was in charge of making sure that Pharaoh was protected. He was basically... Pharaoh's top security detail in charge of everything, dealing with the Secret Service, the protection detail, all that stuff. And this guy, this guy, Joseph, was put second in command in this man's house in charge of all of his affairs. And every day he walked in the house, this man was given all kinds of authority, even though he was a slave. That's the favor of God upon him. The favor of God was upon him so strongly that even as a slave, a Hebrew slave, in working in an Egyptian's house, 
everything was was free. The only thing that was off limits was the food and part of his wife. The food, because he was a Hebrew, and Hebrews, uh, it was considered an abomination to have you know to have a, a Hebrew touch your food. It's just just the way they were. Let it go. Just the way they were. So they couldn't he couldn't touch the food and they couldn't touch the wife. Everything else you, you could touch, but except for the food and his wife. So here we come. His wife, Potiphar's wife, kept kept saying, Come on, let, let's get busy. And he kept refreezing her advancements. So here we come now. Genesis chapter 39, verse 11. And it came to pass about that time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she, Pharaoh, uh, uh, part of his wife, caught him by his garment, his clothes, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth. That she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in, uh, unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard the little of my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her. Can you notice there's a lot of, lot of talk about the clothes until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came unto me, came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. Again, clothes don't make you, but they do tell your story. Now we understand that. Um, after that, you know, Potiphar got mad and threw him in the judge uh, in the prison uh, dungeon. Uh, Genesis, pick up the story. Genesis chapter forty-one, verse fourteen. Then Pharaoh sent out and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the say dungeon dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment, his clothes, and came into Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst in, uh, understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, Ha ha, it is not me. God shall give him Pharaoh an answer of peace. Now, if you see right here, the word pit and dungeon, as I've read in the past few uh, passages of scripture, did you know that they're the same word in Hebrew? Strong concordance H, 952, in a sense of H, uh, 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 Strong concordance is H, uh, H877, a pit or hole, especially used as a cistern or prison. Cistern, dungeon, fountain, well, pit, same thing. So we find this guy is in that same place. Here we go again. Every time you go into, every time you go into one, you lose your garments. But every time you come out of one, you gain new ones. So guess what, y'all? You're coming out of the pit. And God is about to give you some new clothes. Ha! Come on! Y'all about to get some new clothes! Genesis chapter 41, verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such one as this? As this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so, none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto the word, shall all of my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's neck. Look at this. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain round right about his neck. Now, does anybody want to take a guess what vestures of fine linen means? New clothes. New clothes. Even though I can say, 
Clothes don't make you, but they do tell your story. Now, let's look at Joseph's wardrobe. Let's peek into his closet for a little bit, shall we? Dad makes a coat of many colors. Brother strips it off of him and throws him into a pit. Potiphar wife strips off his garments. Potiphar throws him into prison. Pharaoh changes his clothes for a dream interpretation. Pharaoh changes uh, Joseph's clothes again with vestures of fine linen. So this dude went from a coat of many colors to a garment inside the top security house. And then he has uh, to change his clothes to, to go before Pharaoh. And then Pharaoh puts upon him vestures of fine clothes. So you can see as we see the transition, as we see the transitions of the clothes he's wearing from what dad made him to what was stripped of him and then put on something else that was taken off of him. Then he was put on something else and then that was taken off of him. And then boom, we see now he's in he's he's, he's covered and vestured in fine linen. So we see the transition. Um And signifies a, a sense of what Linda great finesse and whiteness was made. Yeah, 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 yes, Jen, Jen. Yeah, really, really elegant, nice clothes. So we see as your clothes begin to increase, so shall your position. Clothes don't make you, but they do tell your story. Now, after all that, from all the trials and, 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 and tribulations that Joseph had to go through, it's really interesting because we see down the line as the dream that he interpreted for Pharaoh actually was coming to pass. They're actually living the, prophet, the prophetic dream uh, that now Joseph's brothers, the very ones who put him into prison, are now starving to death and have to come to Egypt to, to basically beg for some food. And so here they come now. We see the family here. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 45, verse 13, 16, and it goes, and the fame thereof that was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come, and it pleased Pharaoh well, and his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, say unto thy brethren, this do ye, laid your beasts, and go get you unto the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and you shall eat the fat of the land. Now thou art commanded, 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 this do ye, take your wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Also regard not your stuff, for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. Come on, somebody. And the children of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provision for the way. Look at verse 22. To all of them he gave them each man changes of raiment clothes, but to Benjamin, he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of clothes. I don't know why, but this passage of scripture about this story seems to talk a lot about vestures of clothing and raiment. It seems to be a very, very important thing to have that word mentioned so many times. Clothes, clothes, garments, garments, vestures, all these things are symbolizing one thing. There's always something physically taking place when your position or your ministry or your business or your demand that God has for you, there's a change or a shift in the wardrobe that you carry because of the outward appearance of what's taking place on the inside. Every time when God gave that man, uh, uh, when, when the, uh, J Jacob gave jo uh, Joseph the coat of many colors, they took that from him. They tried to take that from him, thinking if we strip him of his clothes, he will not have that prophecy or that that, that mandate or that that um that mandate to fulfill. But it didn't happen because it's not in the clothes. But then all still, even when he was in uh, Potiphar's house, that garment was then taken from him again. He lost that position, but then he went to another place. And then he, before you come into Pharaoh, you must change your clothes. So every time you come into a new place, there is a wardrobe malfunction, but a wardrobe increase. Come on, somebody. And you get to that place where he, Pharaoh says, Boom, takes off his ring and then puts him on vectors of fine linen. And then you get to that place where you are so blessed, you can go and bring linen and clothing to your brethren. It's a recipro recipro reciprocity that happens. Your clothes are about to change. Your clothes are about to change. 
you might think that's nah, a little thing because like I, like I've been saying all night, clothes don't make you, but they do tell your story. They do tell your story. They tell your story. That is interesting now. Psalms 22, 16 through 18. For dogs have compassed about me. I'm sorry. Yeah, for dogs have compassed about me. The assembly of the wicked has have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots for my vesture. Now, this is Jesus, uh, uh, King David, uh, prophesying the words of Jesus when he's about to be on the cross. So it's significant that they say this part. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. So what's so special about that and the clothing? Well, first of all, the clothing he wore, it had no seams, which meant it was a quality garment that took extra time to make. The garment was a set quality of clothing woven from top to bottom in one piece, worn by the high priest in Jerusalem's temple. Unlike clothing made from pieces and thus easier to tear up, the coat worn by Jesus would have been harder to separate into pieces. This is why lots were used so that only one of the soldiers would receive the prize. So, Uh, Kevin, in, in, in essence, it's it's a reflection. It's a reflection of of what? Uh, um, how can I put it? Like, um, no, it's it, it's uh, uh, and I, I'm not gonna say the mandate. Okay, let's just say the mandate. That's a reflection of the mandate you're doing. For example, um, Aaron, when they're when when Aaron and the high priest. When, they, when they're not working in a temple, they're not wearing the ephod. So that was like the, base, the uniform. Let me just put it there. Like you would change your clothes to go to work. So by changing your clothes to go to work, if I come home and put on my quote unquote play clothes or my re relaxation clothes, my I'm changing the assignment. The assignment's changing. So I'm in, I, you know, I'm wearing a you know, blue shirt right now and some, some sweats. But then if I go somewhere else, I'm going to change my clothes. Not to say that I don't care people what I look like, I can care less. But if I'm going to a place that might require a suit, I'm going to change my clothes to meet that environment. So it's a reflection of the assignment that, you, that you're walking into. So when Dave, uh, Joseph, when he had that assignment, um, he, he always, I, I, should have, I should have put this in the notes, but what uh, in, the, in the PowerPoint, but what happened was when he confronted his brothers and told him who he was, he said, you guys didn't do this, but God did this. So the dream that I had, it wasn't so much that you're supposed to be bowing down to me. The dream I had was because I was supposed to be the one that's going to help save you guys. So all the, even the revelation of that came at the end. So that coat of many colors as the high priest was in fact uh, standing in the gap as the high priest makes intercession for those who, who are, are with him. So Joseph was in that position to make an intercession for those who are with him. And in fact, the beautiful part about that is he said that, man, you guys didn't do this, but God did this. So even though when he had on the coat of many colors taken from him, stripped from him, the, the lie that was told was, in fact, the brothers didn't tell the lie. The, they just said, is this his coat? And all of a sudden, Jacob's going, oh, he's dead. He's been dead. So they, there's a story being told about your clothes, and it's not even the truth. It's the conclusion they came up with. That's the conclusion they came up with. It's not even the truth. So there have been lies said about you, mishaps, mistruths, miscommunications, false statements, false conclusions about you based upon your clothes. But God is about to change your clothes. God is about to change your clothes. Oh, that's right. Now I remember now. Thank you. Um, there is a spiritual dynamic, and and again, I'm not trying to be sexist, uh, but it is it is a truth. Um, when men aren't doing 
what God wants them to do, they buy things for their car. It is a outward soulish reaction to something they should be doing in the spirit. So every time a man is not obeying God to go ye or go forth, what he'll do is he'll start to buy wheels for the car, uh, uh, a stronger engine, uh, uh, you know, more uh, torque or, you know, they'll start to tinker with the vehicles because it, it, it's a, it's a, um, a, 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 well, I'm going to put it, an indication of movement going forward, but they're not. So they're actually working on a physical, tangible thing and the natural because they should be doing something in the spiritual. That's what men do. Women buy shoes. I love you guys. The president in the Philippines, um, I forgot her name. Uh, she was the president and she wasn't ruling and governing, but she kept buying shoes. I think this woman, I think it was quarter shed over 3,000 pairs of shoes. She didn't govern not once, but she kept buying shoes. And it was so interesting because they kept saying like, so what about the poor? And so what about, you know, the, the, the trades and what are we going to do this? And she goes, okay, well, we'll get to that. And, but she kept, because she wasn't doing what her assignment was spiritually, but she was acting out in the natural. So a lot of times you'll find yourself in that position of acting out something in the soul, soulish realm, uh, you know, on earth and 3D tangible, something, something that should be happening and manifesting spiritually. Now, it's not to say, you know, if you need some new shoes, get some new shoes, but do you really need 15 pairs of new shoes? Even though you bought 13 pair last month, you're going to buy another? Yeah, but they're on sale. Oh, okay, I get it. They're on sale, but do you got to buy another? You see what I'm saying? Like, brothers will buy tires and get the car wax and get a tune up and get the high performance and start doing this because they're not moving spiritually. So they act out naturally on something that should be done spiritually. So every time Joseph was moved, from a, remember now, from a home, home base, as a slave, second in command, in prison, <laughs> right into prison, before Pharaoh, vice president of the entire Egypt. So you see this progression. And every time he progressed, the, the, the wardrobe changed, the clothes changed. And I, th I thought it was significant that that he began to, it, it states that he gave his brothers new clothes to wear, but Benjamin gave him five changes of, of raiment of clothes. Why, why is that so significant? Because it, may, it means that there's a pr promotion that was coming that happens in the spirit of. Now, again, this is something to where you got to think Hebraically. So if you look at the why the Roman soldiers, why are they fighting over Jesus's garments. Now you might even say, you know, um, uh, nostalgia or you know a souvenir. No, I promise you, I promise you, whoever won, <laughs> put that thing on. They put it on. I promise you, because they really felt like putting on the clothes would have given you the power. Ah, Christine, that's awesome. That's awesome. You're going to be going places, my sister. Go on places. This is why lots were used. They basically go rolling dice to see who would get that one piece garment that Jesus wore. Clothes don't make you, but they do tell your story. My brothers and my sisters, your clothes are about to change. And you're going to have a story to tell. As we're ending off this year, it may feel like a pit <laughs> or a dungeon. I love it. Both of the same word in Hebrew. And that word is the word bore. So whether you you know whether it be a pit or a dungeon, a hole in the ground or in prison, it's a bore. It is a bore, and you're coming out of that. And when you come out of that, you're going to get new clothes. 
That is going to be the telltale sign. When you get the new clothes, know that a new assignment, a new mandate is going to be come on you. Now, I, your destiny hasn't changed. Your destiny was always, Joseph's destiny was always going to be the, the, uh, the dream interpretation. Uh, I'm sorry, not, well, not just the, the fulfillment of that dream. That, that didn't change, but the mandates along the way. Basically, he was saying, I need you to work and learn how to work security from Potiphar. He learned that. While he was in prison, he goes, he learned from the baker and also from the uh, the butler protocol. Are you with me? Then he's working with Pharaoh side by side to run the kingdom for crying aloud. I love the Bible says that Joseph left Egypt and went around the whole entire nation learning and gathering up crop stuff. So he was learning as he was going through the process. Now, this is also key because when God told, when they freed the Hebrews from Egypt, um, and well, okay, he, he led him to the wilderness, but it really wasn't an issue about, um, it, yes, it was about their disobedience and God had to kill the whole generation off, but he took them in a certain way so he can see how the other villages and other, other, uh, nations were dealing with the crops. Uh, how, how did they take care of their, now remember now, these are a bunch of Egyptians, I'm sorry, freed Hebrews who who grew and grew up and knew nothing else other than Egypt. So here you are coming out of Egypt and now you're about, you're about to see some new stuff you never seen before. So God had to show them, this is how you take care of crops. This is how you take care of animals. This is how you tend to, the, to harvest so they can learn from those other places like Samaria and, and, and uh, Syria um, and crossing over through the Jordan. They had to learn how to cultivate they were only in one location now granted egypt at the time was one of the wealthiest nations and they had incredible farming skills they were able to have uh, uh, water irrigations coming out from the nile to water their desert place but now you come into a place where there's plush olives and stuff that is growing so now you got to learn how to take care of your animals take care of your flocks and your herds how to grow corn in these other fertile soils and now how had god put them there immediately Everything would have died. The animals would have went to pot. Uh, all the crops would have been, you know, washed over. So there's a process. So yeah, you may not be the CEO today, but God has you in a position where you can learn the software, learn the business model, learn how to do stuff, learn how to activate and work, work the accounting programs. So while as you learn these things, by the time you get in that seat, I promise you, your wardrobe's going to change, <laughs> and you're going to ease right on in there. You're going to ease right on in there because the favor of God's upon you. So you're not going to just make a CEO overnight. But as you gradually get to that point, learn everything you can. Joseph had to learn. He had to learn. Remember, I, I thought it was interesting. The Bible says in Genesis, he was 17 years old. By, by, the, by the time his brothers saw him, he was 30 years old. So we're talking, what, 14 years of him, if I did my math correctly, um, uh, 14, 15 years, I'm sorry, 13, 14 years of him learning how to do stuff, okay? So it wasn't just a fly by night, oh, you know, I'm I'm in prison, oh, I'm, I'm now I'm second in command. No, there was a process. Trust the process and know that your clothes are gonna change. When Esther, Esther had to go through six months of purification and when she was seen before her, forgot the guy's name, the grand poopa of that time. The Bible says that she told her uncle, look, if we're gonna die, we're gonna die. She went and she changed her clothes. She put on her queenly attire. She put on her queenly attire, which means she wasn't walking around in the clothes that she was given. And that's our problem. God has given you some new clothes, but you're not wearing them. It was when Esther put on her new clothes, her queenly attire, that she wanted to go see the king, and then he granted her permission and basically changed and saved the nation. So I want to pray for you that if you haven't put on your queenly attire or your kingly robe or your coat of many colors or all those things that God has given you that you have not walked into, that first we repent for it, but then we begin to change our, 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 our wardrobe.
when I worked at Pizza Hut, uh, Pizza Hut, when I worked at Papa John's, I couldn't deliver pizza in my Raider shirt and my gray sweats. I had to wear the uniform that identified me as a Papa John's driver. And then when I became general manager, I had to have my green shirt, my gray, my, my brown khakis. God help me, Jesus. But I had to change my clothes because my position changed. Same thing in the spirit realm. Your clothes change. Your wardrobe changes. But you're still walking around in your Lakers shirts and your Kansas City jerseys. Change your clothes. Fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your destiny. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in this season, God, that you are changing, changing, changing not only the outward, but also the inward the inward of who we are, allowing that spirit man to come glow, clothed with the radiance of your glory. Father, it says in your word that Paul said there's a garment that covers over their hearts, but only when that garment is removed that you can get to the heart of a person. So, Father, we just take off those garments of shoal, those garments of death, those garments, Lord God, that have kept us in our own prisons and our own dungeons. And we take off those clothes now, Father. And we put on the robes of righteousness. We put on the helmet of salvation. We put on uh, the girdle of truth, Lord God, and the breastplate of righteousness, God, with our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. But more importantly, Lord God, we put on love, joy, peace, and happiness. And we step out of the pit and directly, Father, into the palace. Forgive us, O oh Lord God, for putting on the, 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 gar the garments of old. We're not that same person. We are not those same people. But we put on your clothing, your raiment, your fine linen, God. And Father, we're reminded as it says in Revelation, the men in white linen, the men in white linen, because you've changed their clothes. So, Father, even this hour, God, we change our clothes. We take off our concubine clothes. We take off our slave clothes. Oh, there it is. We take off those clothes that identify us with our past. We take off those clothes that we wore in shame. And we put on the garment of praise. We put on the garment of praise. We put on the garment of praise. Something happens when we change our clothes. So, Father, even those are the pit. We thank you, Lord, you're pulling them out. 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 Out to that pit. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Out of the pit. And into the palace. Thank you, Lord. Today, things change. The atmosphere, the environment, the outlook, and our wardrobe. Would you place upon us, Father, the coat of many colors so that we may dream again. And we may live again. And now we step forward and into a new season, Father. Looking good. Looking good. So when they ask, what are you wearing? We can tell them the garment of praise. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Any questions or comments?
I just can't help but think about how God dressed Adam and Eve after he, you know, asking them, <laughs> who told yeah. you you were naked? <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. Tunics of skin. I love that. Tunics of skin. I love how there's always some kind of like, and in Revelations, they were all dressed in white. Singing the singing the new song. This is beautiful, beautiful way that is put. And if he took the time to specifically dress the high priest, you know there's a protocol about it's important about how we look. Not no, not that 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 makes that makes us, but according to the specifications of the ephod, the shoulders, the length, and everything. And even in the temple, uh, apparently interior design uh, is really uh, something significant with God. And I love the way he says, if you look at the lilies, look how beautiful they look. And if God can clothe them, come on. <laughs> You're about to look beautiful because God's about to change your clothes. Can I share something? Yes. I just want to share. Um... It just what on, an on time message it is. I, since I've moved and people ask me what I do, I tell them I'm an artist. And I wouldn't say that before. And now I say it fully. And since I've changed that, I am. I sent you a picture just now. And during Bible study, I just painted. I've been having an issue because of the time difference that I fall asleep and I feel so bad. I wake up in my computer staring back at me sometimes. And <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm staying awake tonight. I'm going to get through this. And so I painted this picture while you were talking, and that's my new garment. I have an artist garment now. Oh my God. To God I have an artist, uh, artist garment, and I wear my garment proudly. Thank you, Jesus. This is beautiful. Uh, do you mind if I share it with, with everybody? No, please do. Please do. I don't mind. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, I'll put it in. Wait, I'm going to buy a camera. Ah, wait, there it goes. She just painted that. Can you guys see that? It's kind of crooked. Beautiful. It's like, yeah, it, it, it looks better than that, you guys. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. show good on the phone. But... <laughs> that is beautiful. Praise God. That is beautiful. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So, and, and, and yeah, and I'm, I'm not just saying that because it's Christmas and we always get new clothes on Christmas. No, you're going to get some new clothes. You're going to know which ones I'm talking about when you get them. You're going to know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Because they're gonna, it's gonna be empowering, um, and whatever this next season has that God has for you, uh, you're gonna walk right into it, and that's gonna be more prophetically as as to say that when you get them, know that you're coming out of the pit and into the palace, and it begins in the next few weeks. Yeah. So, with that in mind, knowing that. You're about to step into a new place with new clothes. Who's going to be the next millionaire? Me, me, me. <laughs> I love it. All of us. <laughs> Come on. Amen. All of us. You know, you know, it's, you know, it's just so beautiful about when you know, I was talking about how when Joseph, he, the main reason why um, they tell the stories because of the, uh, it's obviously about forgiveness, but it's also about community and about family. Uh, when I didn't even realize that Pharaoh had said, when you guys come here, leave all your stuff because all the stuff here is already yours. I mean, favor, favor, leave your stuff. I got new stuff for you. So you don't have to take your old stuff with you. The new microwave, the new crock pot, it's all coming with you. New stuff. All coming, y'all. It's about to get gooder and gooder. So, amen. I just want to share that with you guys and know that, uh, you know, that okay, now that doesn't mean you go out there and go buy shopping. Let it come to you. But if you feel led and you feel something, just go ahead and get it. Get it. Get it. When God makes a way, his will, his bill. And it's about to get gooder and gooder. In Jesus' name. Okay, so just so we're clear, 
Um, Saturday begins, or actually Sunday begins Hanukkah. So Saturday, Saturday we're going to engage Hanukkah and about the, the where, what it means, wh where does it come from, and what's the my mystical revelations that deal with you and I. And interesting enough, okay, well, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but just, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Uh, so we're going to talk about Hanukkah um, because it begins for the next eight days starting on Sunday. Um, just know that our clothes are going to change and we're going to step into this new year with new clothes, new mindset, new purpose, new focus, new assignments in Jesus' name. So I love you guys and we will see you on Saturday. Good night, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Amen and shalom, billionaires. Come on, amen. <laughs> Love you guys. Shalom. Goodbye. Bye. Shalom, shalom. Stop it. It's <laughs> <laughs> my son. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Stop recording.